welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about the Snoo Bassinet from Happy's Baby. More specifically, the top 15 things that I think everybody should know prior to purchasing this new, or at least quickly afterwards. <laughs> All right, number one. First thing you wanna do is go onto Facebook and find the Snoo Mamas Facebook group. It is a private group, it's got about 15,000 members and it was hands down the saving grace to our Snoo and the reason that we were so successful in our journey. All right, number two where you should put the bassinet in your room. This is actually a question that I get all the time and it's really going to depend. Um, for the most part, your bedroom, wherever you're sleeping, it's recommended that baby sleeps in the same room as you for their first six months of life. So in your room, as far as where in your room, that's going to be up to you. Um, we have a pretty small place and with nursing, it made sense obviously to have the bassinet on my side of the bed, but maybe if your place is a little bit bigger, you could do it you know, in a more centralized location so that both you and your husband um, or caregiver or whoever has equal access to it because I will say the way that we have it set up, um, it's definitely easier for me to get to, but let me show you guys how we have it set up. So. This is my side of the bed, so the snoo is going on my side of the bed. So it's pretty close, it's enough space for me to walk in between it. I added this cute little canopy thing up here, and it helps for us with the morning light. It just kind of like blocks his face a little bit. We have a pretty big window right above him. The other option, or thing that people ask me is, do you use a camera? We sure do. <laughs> um, I We use the infant optics. We have one in our daughter's room at well, as well. And it literally just sits over the snoo so that we can see him. And then the last piece that I get asked a lot is the sound machine portion. So we use this guy. It's like a sound screen. Um, and we have one in our daughter's room as well. But we use this in addition to the white noise in the snoo because... I found that when we turned it on, the sound of it starting would sometimes startle him awake. So yeah, that's the proximity that we have it to the bed. All right, number three. Can you use this new bassinet with your newborn and or a preemie baby? And the answer is yes. So there is a setting on this new called the motion limiter setting, and you will um, hear referred to as the preemie setting as well. And in this mode, it basically stops the snoo from going past the level two of motion. So let me show you guys what that looks like. <laughs> All right, now we're just gonna go on a quick tour of the snoo itself. So we are gonna pretend that baby is in here and clips are engaged. Again, the sleep sacks just have this little loop and you slide it on like so. Okay. All right, so once baby is in there, you will come over to the power button That is the speaker for the white noise. Also want to show you guys that you can actually level the snoo up by using the bassinet itself and not actually having to use the app on your phone. So this is the baseline movement. If we go to here and we hold it down. It's gonna turn pink. And this is level one. Again, you can level it up yourself without using the app. And now it's green.
The other thing you'll notice is that the white noise changed. It got a little bit louder and the sounds themselves changed. All right, so this is the fastest level of the snoo. There you go. And then if baby is just super unhappy, we turn it off. And everything stops. All right, so in that video, I also showed you guys how you can manually level up the snoo without using the app itself. So while the snoo bassinet is Wi-Fi capable and you do need Wi-Fi in order to use the snoo's app, um, you don't necessarily need it. So one of the things and I'm piggybacking here is that you can only have the bassinet hooked up to one app. So between mom and dad, only one of you can have access to this new from your phone. So that can be challenging if someone is working outside of the home um, and they're not there to, to level it up if need be or, or whatever. So you can actually change the different um, motions from the front of the snoo directly. And in regards more specifically to preemie babies, um, I know mamas who have brought home their four and a half pound NICU babies and put them directly into the snoo for sleeping. And their pediatricians just recommended that until baby reaches their original due date to lock it on the baseline motion. So that is some functionality of the app itself where when you're in the app you can basically click on this little lock button and tell the snoo to never level up past the baseline motion so can you use it with a newborn or a preemie baby absolutely number four that the snoo actually has three different settings so I just talked about it a little bit. The first setting is the motion limiter setting where it will not go past level two. Then there is just the regular setting. And then there is the weaning mode. And that is for when you are ready to transition baby from the snoo bassinet into their crib. And what that does is that it stops the continuous motion. So when you go to turn the snoo on, the bassinet will not move. The only thing that happens is that the white noise starts playing. Um, and the motion will only engage if it hears baby crying. All right, that brings me to number five, that the snoo moves all night long. This is something that not a lot of people actually know prior to purchasing the snoo. And unless you have the snoo on the weaning mode, it will move at the baseline motion all night long. Whether you have it on the motion limiter or just the regular setting, the snoo is actually moving all night. So yes, I do know some people that start off in the weaning mode um, because they don't want that continuous motion. That's just a personal preference. But if you didn't know, the snoo does move all night long unless you are on the weaning mode function. All right, number six, what to dress your baby in. And this comes up all the time. This is obviously going to vary depending on your climate, the temperature of your home, and also just your baby's preference, whether they run warm, run cold, whichever. So because you can't put a blanket into the bassinet for safety reasons, um, what you can do is you can actually wrap baby in a blanket before placing them inside of the sleep sack and then zip the sack over that to give baby a little bit of extra warmth. Um, and of course, if you feel like they're running a little hot, you know, put them in a onesie as you see fit. So this one's really going to depend on the climate of your home and how your baby is most comfortable. All right, so that brings me to number seven. And this is something that not a lot of people know as well, but you can actually start baby out with their arms out from the very beginning. So if you've seen what this new looks like and 
you know, you know that the baby's arms are swaddled down by their sides. But not every baby enjoys being swaddled that way. Some babies really do need access to their hands to self-soothe um, in order to sleep well. But that can be challenging because with their like startle reflux, you know, they are hitting themselves in the face or scratching themselves and waking themselves up. So the way around that is actually to double swaddle using something called the love to dream swaddle. So let me show you guys what the love to dream swaddle looks like, and then I'll show you guys how it looks in the snoo bassinet. All right, so this is the love to dream swaddle. And I lovingly call it the squirrel suit <laughs> because they kind of look like a flying squirrel when they're in it. But the way that this works with the um, happiest baby uh, swaddle that it comes with is that you have to unbutton the arms. And then once baby is in it, you literally just stick their little arms out of the top like so. And then you would place this piece just around their waist and you would zip up like normal. And then they have their arms up here like that. So that they can self soothe, which is what we needed in our house <laughs> for sure. All right, this isn't a part of it, but I also want to show you guys just how you can double swaddle in general using a muslin swaddle. All right, so the other way to double swaddle in the snoo is with an actual just like muslin swaddle. Um, I prefer the muslin just because it doesn't um, like trap heat as much. So we're just gonna do how you would normally swaddle bib. And then you would just swaddle them like you would normally swaddle a baby. So we're gonna go around. Oh no, is it too warm? So I'm not gonna swaddle him super tight just because he doesn't really love it. Um, but then you would do the snoo like normal. <laughs> you can see he already has his hand out but I will show you guys a trick in a second for that. And then you would literally just zip it up like normal. So he has his arms out, so this is not going to be super effective, but if his arms were down, it would just be swaddled normally. Now, Tanner here is a Houdini when it comes to this. So another option that you can do Is like so so we are going to take his arm I know. and we're actually gonna tuck the swaddle underneath him like that and it's still loose like this isn't hurting him I know and then like so and then we're making sure that all of this is nice and flat underneath his back like that and then you would swaddle arms And you can just kind of like tuck baby in. So obviously he is <laughs> grown this in his feet, but you would just zip it up like normal. And you can see that even my little Houdini like cannot get his arms out this way. Huh. All right, good job, bud. Oh, and those snoo stretches are the best. All right, number eight, the whale tail. This is not something that I knew about with my oldest. She never did this, at least that I remember, but my son does it a lot. So 
we lovingly call it the whale tail and it's basically when baby like thrashes their legs up and down um, and it can be something that they do to help them soothe but usually it just ends up waking them up so here's how you can use a rolled up receiving blanket or muslin swaddle to fix the whale tail problem <laughs> yeah is to take a rolled up like receiving blanket and this is just like a muslin swaddle and actually put it like underneath their knees and then zip up this new sack like so and having that underneath their knees like that will I don't know why it works it just does um, and that way it stops him from kind of waking himself up at night as well Huh. Okay. So one last thing I did want to show you with this is if you were having issues with baby doing the whale tail, where again, it's like they literally just slam their legs up and down, uh, you could still do that with this love to dream swaddle. And the way that I do that is like this. So this receiving blanket's a little bit big, but it'll work for this purpose. You would, again, just put it towards the bottom crook baby's knees over the top of it and then zip it back down. So what I find works easiest is if you get baby into the swaddle and then unzip from the bottom and just deal with their legs. So that tends to work better both in the snoo sack and then also in the love to dream swaddle. All right, number nine. So this is not something that I actually needed, but it is something that so many people swear by. And that is using a silk pillowcase as a cover for the mattress. So if you're having issues with baby maybe getting a little bald spot in the back, which can actually be quite normal, um, just from them moving around at nighttime, but you can use a queen size silk pillowcase that you just slip over the entire snoo mattress and you use that instead of using the fitted snoo crib sheet. All right, number 10. So this is also something that I learned from my Snoo Mama's Facebook group, but Happy's Baby will actually replace your Snoo sleep sacks if the Velcro wears out. So if the Velcro on your swaddle wears out or just isn't holding like you know that it should be, contact Happiest Baby and they will actually replace the, the sleep sack at no cost to you. All right, number 11, and this is a big one. Um, people that are intimidated by the motion of the snoo. I mean, the short of it is just don't be. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, it has to be something that you are comfortable with. And I highly suggest that you speak to your pediatrician if you really, you know, have questions, but also to refer to the Happiest Babies website. All of their science behind how much it moves and why it works, you know, is on there. So I encourage you to, to look at that. What helped me feel a little more comfortable, not a little more, what helped me feel completely comfortable with the motion of the snoo was the fact that both of my kids are bouncers. And I, with my daughter, I bounced her on a yoga ball for what felt like an eternity. And I was bouncing my son one day and I caught myself in the mirror and I just kind of noticed like how much his head was moving while I was bouncing him. And this new motion never even comes close to that. So I'm comfortable with it. Again, it's a very personal preference. It can be weird to see your baby moving like that when you're not the one holding them um, but again you can always keep it on the motion limiter setting where it never goes past level two um, there are different ways to make it feel more comfortable for you but if you're intimidated by the motion you know it's really something that you just have to be okay with and again you know with both of my kids being bouncers, like their head is moving way more when I bounce them than this new has ever moved them. <laughs> All right, which brings me into number 12. How many sleep sacks and sheets should I have before baby arrives? And I am a minimalist when it comes to things like this, but 
I do not suggest that you go out and buy like five of each size um, of the sleep sacks. And the reason for that is that you just don't know how your baby is going to want to be swaddled. So again, like for our family, both of my kids needed to have their hands up by their faces and we needed to use the love to dream swaddles. So I would be probably a little upset if I purchased five small snoo sleep sacks and what I really needed was a bunch of the love to dream sleep sacks. So I recommend, so snoo, when you buy it, you it comes with a small, medium, and large and um, the mattress we got a jewelry baby um, and the sheet. So I suggest probably having maybe like three sets of sheets, um, you know, for spit up and anything that might occur. And I would say to start off with two of the small sleep sacks and then see how it goes. Um, you can always buy more <laughs> um, as you need them. And also depending on how your baby grows and everything like that, you just, you don't need a ton necessarily. So I say start small, get a couple extra mattress um, covers and an extra small sleep sack and then see what works for your babe. All right, number 13, use another sound machine. Um, I'm not sure if I've already shown the video uh, where, I think I did in the beginning, but we use an additional sound machine. And the reason behind that is as great as the white noise is in the snoo, I didn't think it was enough for our house, um, having a loud toddler running around at nap time and everything else. Um, also, I felt like when we put baby in the snoo, the sound of the white noise turning on would sometimes wake them up in an otherwise very quiet room. So by having the other white noise on already, it really just helps transition them into the uh, snoo. And then also it works wonders for once you're ready to wean from the snoo itself, they're already used to a different white noise anyways. All right, number 14, the leg elevators. So this is not something that I knew either until after I had purchased but Snoo sells leg lifters for the two I don't know, front or back legs, however you're looking at it. And what it does is it actually puts the Snoo at a slight incline. And this is great for babies with reflux um, or if you've got a kiddo with a stuffy nose and you're trying to give them a little incline to help with that, it works wonders. So the leg lifters are an amazing feature. You don't have to mess with crib wedges or anything like that. Um, they were great. And I don't think that Snoo is gonna endorse this, but um, a lot of moms actually just use tuna cans. So you can put one tuna can underneath two of the legs and it lifts the Snoo like at the same kind of incline that the leg lifters do. All right, and last but certainly not least, number 15. And this is whether to put baby down fully asleep, drowsy, or awake. And depending on where your baby is at, um, there's kind of two answers. I would say for the first five to six weeks, you're putting baby into this new very much asleep, like completely in a REM cycle, asleep, asleep. Um, and then after that, that's when you can start to kind of play around with putting them down drowsy. So, you know, right before they fall asleep, placing them into this new. I don't ever recommend putting them in fully awake. The Snoo Bassinet is not like a robot nanny. It is not designed to like put your child to sleep for you. The purpose of the motion of the Snoo is to help your child learn how to bridge their own sleep cycles. So a baby's like deep sleep REM cycle is usually about 45 minutes and then it transitions into periods of lighter sleep. The motion helps soothe baby during those times of lighter sleep to help them learn to connect their own sleep cycles. That's the purpose of it. So if you're putting baby in completely awake, I, it's, not, it's not usually gonna end very well. Um, even if baby is like happy, um, it still probably isn't gonna put your kid to sleep and you 
really shouldn't be using it for that purpose. So I would say for the first five or six weeks, put baby down totally asleep. And then for any time after that, you can start playing around with putting them down drowsy and like having them to start teach themselves how to, you know, put themselves asleep from there. All right, so those are the 15 things that I think everybody should know about this new bassinet, either before buying or shortly after. Um, one thing I did not really discuss was our transition from this new to the crib, and that's because, truthfully, it deserves its own video. Um, there's a lot of information for that as well. So I will post a separate video soon of our journey from transitioning um, out of this new into the crib. But just a little disclaimer, I promise it's not that scary. It was actually a really easy process for us and to put anyone's mind at ease, I do not believe that this new creates any kind of dependency on that motion. So look for that video to come out soon. And my final piece of advice on financially kind of lessening the burden of this new. Um, the price of this bassinet is a lot and it was not something that was within our budget. So the way that I was able to go around that was I added this new bassinet to my Amazon baby registry. I waited for Happiest Baby to run a sale and once it was 30% off, that, that price reflected on my Amazon registry. Then I used one of my 15% completion discount coupons, making this new bassinet 45% off. Um, once we were done with it, since we are very done having children, um, I sold it on Facebook Marketplace for $700. And that brought our out-of-pocket expense for this new bassinet down to about $100 to $150 um, after we purchased like the extra sleep sacks and everything. So that's my piece of advice for financially lessening the burden of this new. If you guys have any questions or comments, please drop them below. I am happy to answer them. Please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much.